Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another staging of Conversations. This is a very special edition today. Today, it all begins with a story. We are sitting here with another guest, Mr. I Nation. Mr. Do you go by Mr.? Oh, Just I Nation. Just I Nation. How did I Nation come about? I Nation come about initially from Wretched of the Earth, you know, by Franz Fanon. It's from reading that book, the whole awakening of I Nation coming to be, you know. The consciousness never really cemented until the reading of Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. Tell me a little bit about Kirk Scarlett before reading Wretched of the Earth and what brought you to that book. Kirk Scott was an ordinary you, but always have a little cutting edge about him, same way still, you know. Always trying to view things out of the box, as usual, you know. But Wretched of the Earth initially come about now from the 2003 Global Reason that I had up at UE, a Rastafari Global Reason, where I met a princess and she introduced me to the book. And from I get the book now, I just couldn't put it down, you know. It just, like, it's written for me, you know. Yeah, because the book now I deal with violence on a level where I come from a violent community, you know, I breed, I eat, I live violent, so this book now gives you like a holistic view of violence, you know, so I just appreciate love it much and just, it, it really changed my life, you know, it make I, you don't even want to be bad no more, you know, you don't want to be gangster no more, you don't want to practice violence in a sense where it uh, bring harm or negativity to another, you know, if you, if you practice violence, it must bring some wholesome and some advancement and betterment to the people and to the nation, you know, so. So would you say that was the point when you became a, a revolutionary? Yeah, in a sense, yeah, I would have said that, yeah. Because before it was just being a rebel, you know, so, but there's a difference between just being a rebel and being a revolutionary, you know. When you be a rebel, it's just like, you're just going off a passion, you know, but there is no real substance with it. You know, but when you be a revolutionary, you know, there is a whole lot of substance and consciousness. The fire will start blaze up. You just get hungry for knowledge. You know, check out Sangsa, check out Kingston. Can't get them. Motor store lock up. Can't get them. You know, in the library I have them. So the CMC Street you now they start network with our getting the books. Them start share them with Bridgin. Bridgin love them, but we're not financially stable. We could just give them away like that. So we say, all right then, start sell them. So brother have a bicycle, take it to and say, all right, full up a cardboard box and just start ride around. So we say, all right now, we need to get to the masses, but you can't get to the masses, because the masses is enough. So get to the ones who have the biggest influence on the masses. So we say, the musicians, them have it. So we say, we start to target the studios, you know, where the musicians, them hang out and thing and just start to target them. So yeah, them get the mad knowledge and put it through, through the music. We just try to play a small role in the whole awakening of the nation, you know? So we just go around here and there all over, you know, the books them and just... But the people know these books exist and you can have them and you need to have them and read them and empower yourself, you know? Create that change within your life, you know? Some of the books that, 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 that you, you, you sell, I don't see them in bookstores anywhere. Yeah, because these books now are the books now where is the real books, you know, as earlier, the earlier interview we said, these books were one time banned by the said Prime Minister who persona non grata, Walter Rodney, you know. But these books now as as being African people, we need to read about ourselves, you know, and read books that were written by us, for us, you know, to empower us. So these are the books now where you're not gonna find them in the bookstores or in the school or read not even in the church, you know. Cause these books now will make you Rebel, make you know yourself. You're not really supposed to know yourself. You know, you're supposed to just be ignorant and just conform to the status quo of just getting a nice education, getting a good job, having a house or whatever, you know. Just live comfortably within the bamboo cement or the illusion, within the matrix, you know. So these books now kind of break you out of that. You know, make you see life on a whole different level. In these conversations, we're talking about the impact of the literary arts on music and revolution. So right away, we've seen that from reading Franz Fanon's Wretched of the Earth, you immediately became a revolutionary. The dance them, the shatters them, especially the, the dance them, are ones who have enough influence, you know, so even 
within my community I start targeting for the man them because I personally know them and accustomed to them, you know. So the Dons are reading books? Well, the main Don does I want to read a whole heap of books. I want to purchase a whole heap of books from my, you know. And in the, in the purchase rubbish, you know, sieve through the box intently and take out book of substance, you know. Do you think that, that Dodos is misunderstood? Yeah, in a sense, it's not just Dodos is misunderstood. The whole situation is very much misunderstood, you know, because the thing bigger than Dodos, you know, the thing is about power, you know, and the thing is not about drugs or guns. Or it, 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 it has nothing to do with what Dodos have done, with the potential that Dodos hold. You know, because Dodos was no longer a muscle of any politician, he no longer represented the JLP. What he represent is authority to represent the people. Not within it full consciousness, but he must grow in there. You know, and that's what the leaders and the authority is scared of. Dodos, if, if within any colonial society or nation, you need to have a stronghold that can withstand the state, that in case the state become a monster. And Western Kingston was that stronghold. If a revolution tree kick in Jamaica today, there is no place that can withstand the state. This, the state would have run in and just squashed the revolution right away. While with Tivoli Garden up and running, a revolution could kick and it could really be successful. You know? So within due time, if those get the full consciousness, if they allow them to get the full consciousness, the, the so-called incursion wouldn't be an incursion, it would be a revolution. The whole social and political situation in Jamaica now is, is exactly the way the powers want it to be. You know, they're, 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 to us we might say a whole lot of problem, but to the leaders there is no problem. Because it's the people, the people who are dying is the people who they want to die. When last have you heard a politician get gunned on in Jamaica? You know, the gunmen, they're not killing politicians. They're killing the poor and the have-nots, they're killing themselves. You know, so the situation is exactly as how they would want it. The leaders are the enemies. That, that's, that's the thing we must recognize. Leader, if, you, if, you, if you're not your own leader, then you become your own enemy. So the promise of revolution that, that Walter Rodney spoke about, maybe there could have been a potential. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And the leaders, they know these things. Because one of the things we recognize in politics, no, nothing, nothing is coincidental. And nothing is overnight. We're not reading this thing, what I'm calling, we have a 30 year development plan. That's going on from 2000 to 2030, you know. But as Walter already know, tell me, we know there is no development for any black populist nation. It's pure under development, you know. But this is actually the third 30-year plan, because before that you have two, you know. You have from the 40s where we just uh, get political power or whatever, you know, and that lasts from 40s to the 70s, which was I, I term it the the grassroots, you know, you have grassroots labor right, grassroots PMP, and then the second one will be from the 70s to the 2000. That is the diard. So you have diard PMP, diard labor right, and then this third one now is the barn, barn labor right, barn PMP. Wow. So is 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 an identity, because you know, as 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 Walter wrote the telly again, say Africans were taken. From Africa, a rip from Africa, and automatically become Negroes, you know, enslaved Negroes. So after after emancipation, you still weren't allowed to be to reclaim your identity. You still weren't allowed to be an African, and then even independence still never allowed you to reclaim all our slavery and colonialism took away. You know, you still was given a false identity, which is a, a tribalized identity, a divide and rule identity, which is JLP and PMP. You know, so at no time were you allowed to be African. You know, so the, the, the psyche was, you know, your your subliminally or socially engineered to be your most dominant identity is to be a JLP or a PMP. You see know what I'm saying? So not an African. Not an African. Not, not, not a Jamaican. That. You know, the, but that is Jamaican. All Jamaicans are JLP and PMP. You know, there is no Jamaican who's not a JLP or a PMP. That is our tribe. Yeah, and, and, and you split, you split, it split household, it split religion, it split everything.